The largest class at the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic from Spooky Nook Sports Complex here in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, getting ready for the shoot up finals. It's the amateur class, the men's open on deck. Hi everyone, welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, sitting alongside an archery legend, Rio Wild, as we get set for a host of matches, Rio. But so far this weekend, Lancaster Archery Classic broke records, 2,700 people here to compete, has been fantastic. It's, it's crazy. From where it's come from, I mean, I eventually... You should probably do that one. Okay, we'll trade you. Yeah, we'll do that. It's my bad. We're good. Uh, from where it came from originally, I mean, coming to the first one to where it's at now is, is amazing. I mean, we started over at the shooting center and everything like that, and it's just grown to, to something that I, I would have never thought. Yeah, five lines of qualification happened earlier this weekend, but now we're in the mix of it on our final day of competition. We started with Masters Open Pro, then we had Bowhunter Women's Recurve and an unbelievable finish to Olympic Recurve. Then we just finished up with Youth Mail. Now we're in the Men's Open where they had 64, now they're down to eight. Then we're gonna go to Women's Open Pro where four qualified and then the Open Pro where the big money is, where eight qualified as well. So we have a ton of archery on deck. Let's take a look at this particular one, the top eight qualified, and it's a bottom up shoot. So number eight is gonna shoot against number seven. Whoever wins that will shoot against the sixth seed. And then whoever wins that to the fifth seed all the way up to number one. So the possibility of our eighth place seed shooting to number one, it's out there. It's happened and it's possible, Rio. Yeah, the CEO did it one year and so it's not anything we haven't seen before. In fact, it was only a couple years ago, so. Yeah. This is always a great show. There's a risk reward here in the finals. It's a 12 ring, a 1.5 centimeter white dot that's located down there with a seven, eight ring. It must be called for it to count and you're only allowed to call it once per end. So there's four opportunities. If you add up all the points with the smallest ring in the middle of the target being 11, 136 points is the max value. Well, we're ready to get things going and we got some great stories that are on the way for these top eight. So let's get to a third member of our broadcast team, PJ Riley, as he welcomes the archers to the field to play. All right, this is the largest class at the Lancaster Archery, Archery Classic Men's Open. So we're gonna start out with our number eight seed from right here in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, Doug Williams. <laughs> Doug qualified 58th and made it up to the number eight seed. Our number seven seed from Weirton, West Virginia, Noah Woodnicki. And Noah qualified 52nd. So these guys had to do some shooting to get here. He's not kidding. I mean, Rio, they take the top 64. And tell us how elimination works. If you're 64th seed, who do you shoot against? You get the very number one guy. The guy who shot the best score for the 60 arrows that get there, and you have to step up and... It's a tough task, no matter what. I mean, you're talking their confidence is through the roof because they've shot their best score to qualify, and then you've got to beat them. So it's no easy task. So number 58 qualifier probably shot against, what, sixth or seventh place? Yeah. And the 52nd qualifier, and that's who we see right now. First arrow of our shoot-up is away. Okay. These archers are shooting at 20 yards to a 40-centimeter target face. They're on an elevated platform under lights, which we haven't seen in shooting around a crowd. Now we see a crowd, but rare is it when you're yeah. shooting even elimination rounds where all eyes are on you. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot different. In fact, uh, I talked to Noah earlier just a little bit and he yeah. said that uh, he was a little nervous to walk out there. He said, is the lighting the same? Is it everything? Cause you just don't know. And you worry about where your first arrow hit. Like you just don't know from practice ranged out here is to where it'll go. So he seems to be a little on the right, but he seemed to be grabbing yeah. some clicks, so that should help him. And Doug's been out here before. Uh, he's been on the stage here at Lancaster before, so it's not a surprise that he's here, but it gives him a little more experience yeah. to step out there. And Douglas Williams career, 10 time national champ. He's been shooting for 38 years. And he's a well-known face around these parts. Copy 11, so a 33 for him. Now they do have the a monitor that's down on the ground, but most people feel more comfortable <laughs> using the binoculars. Let's go to PJ. It felt good. 
All right, Doug Williams, you are no stranger to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. How many times have you been up here? Well, in this building twice, once down there in the old uh, archery range, so. Does it get, I saw you checking your hand there. What's so. that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it doesn't get any easier. It's still fun, though. No matter what, how, how often you do it, it still gets, gets your blood pumping. Gotcha. Well, run through your equipment for us, Doug. Shooting a Hoyt Invicta with the DCX cams. I'm a little odd with, with that whole thing. <laughs> uh, CB Elevate Sight, Hamski Rest, Gold Tip Arrows, Triple Xs with four fletch, uh, and a stand Black Pearl re Release. All right, great looking setup there, Doug. Welcome back to the stage after our first end. Of course, just shot that perfect 33. You have a two point lead over Noah. You can see Doug is still trying to shake off that adrenaline. I mean, I've done that before too, Rio. When you get into a shoot under pressure situation, you get done with that last air and you just kind of go, look at your hand baffled, like, wow. How did I hit the target? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we all made that shot that you're just like, oh my gosh, I just, how did I do that? And I, I think that's part of his experience out here to walk out and shoot as good as he started off. Like, Eleven. Now, Rio, what we know is that archery is, without question, one of the most individualistic sports out there. No setup's the same, mm -hmm. whether no shot's the same. But even looking at these two yeah. archers, you have feather veins on Noah's arrows, and he's only got three. Mm -hmm. And it looks like probably, you know, some type of plastic four-fletch. Why? What is the difference? What are they looking for? Yeah. Forgiveness. And in archery, that's one of the biggest things that people try to find and understand is when you make that mediocre shot, when you're shaking and, and really in that nerve situation, something that will help you make the arrow go in the middle. Yeah. And everybody has their own, like I said, it's very individualistic, and everybody has what they think helps them the most. And because archery is 90% mental, I mean, it is so much, and if you believe in it, it it's going to work for you. 11, Whatever Doug believes right now seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, he's smoking. Yeah, and it's. Oh, well, the, the, the feathers are a little softer, so some people believe that you have a little more forgiveness off them if they happen to me. Let's go to PJ. He's talking to Noah. I was shocked. I was wondering how bad you guys were going to butcher it. <laughs> Sometimes I guess right. I've heard it all before, so it's all right. <laughs> have you shot the classic before? Yeah, I think this is my fifth time here. Fifth time. First time on the big stage. Yes, sir. Um, is it what you expected? You yeah, like, I talked to a few people about I me. Mean, it's hard to describe until you're really up here. Until you're up there. Yeah. It looks like you're finding your groove down yeah. there. Tell us about your setup. What are you shooting? So I'm shooting a Hoyt Invicta 40, a True Ball Excel sight with an Ultra View scope, B Singer stabilizers, uh, gas bowstrings, gold tip arrows, and Carter release. Carter release. All right, very good, Noah. Welcome to the stage here. And after two ends, we have a 66-63 lead for Doug. So PJ did a great job. Wood Nicky yeah. nailed it right out of the box. who has been shooting 19 years. And Noah, who we're looking at right now, he qualified in the 52nd position. So the fact that we have a 58-place qualifier and a 52-place qualifier shoot their way up into the top eight is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's, a, it's no easy task. Anybody can tell you that, oh, yeah, you just shot me. Like, it's not. Because <laughs> you take your confidence from qualification because you're like, I qualified 58th or 60th, and it's tough. Like, I mean, I'll be honest, I qualified 60-something myself, and it was tough to go against Mr. Number 3, at Mike Saucer, and it's not easy. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. 396 archers entered and competed in the men's open category. 388 did not make this stage. So that gives you some perspective of how difficult it is to get here. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta have a good mental game in elimination matches, don't you? Oh. It's not just a shot, but. Oh, huge, you gotta believe that you've got a chance at any point. I mean, right here, right now, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a three point gap right now, and you, it could change in a heartbeat. Doug could shoot a nine, you, you just don't know, and so it's a, it's a thing that you gotta be able to be mentally strong enough to stay with it. Yeah, and of course, this target face with the innermost ring counting as 11, that nine you're talking yeah. about, that's a two-point massive swing. Oh, huge. And it, and it happens, though. We've seen it. 
And if a guy decides to go for a 12 and shoots an 8 or something, it can be even bigger. I mean, that was one of the things that I talked to some other archers about is what went These guys made it to the final 8. You do that. It's amazing what a couple millimeters do. Let's go to PJ. Place we're familiar with right next door here. About three eggs is down on 283. <laughs> I work for Kinsey's Outdoors, so. And what do you do for them? I am uh, one of the sales guys. I also do all the events for them. Um, so I do get to play with my bow once in a while, but it's one of those things, you know, you don't always want to shoot your bow after you've been working on bows all day. What? You come into archery and you don't get to shoot your bow? When does yeah. that happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, word to the wise. Don't get into your hobbies. <laughs> Make them a profession, that's for sure. How long have you been shooting? 38 years. 38 years. All right, uh, good start here to your finals match. Three-point lead, 98 to 95. You've seen it, Rio. I've seen it. I've done it. I have a passion for something. I want to get into that business. And then I stop riding motorcycles. I, you know, the, the amount of times I can shoot my bow gets reduced. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, wise man once told me, uh, don't make your hobby yeah. a profession. But uh, for some reason, that seemed to be my living for the last so many years. <laughs> yeah. Final end of our shoot up finals. The seventh and eighth place seeds are shooting to shoot up against the sixth place. And at some point, we got to look at the draw. Because Doug's only missed one. Mm -hmm. And so you got to put the pressure on him. But. Yeah, I think uh, Noah with Nikki's got to hit the button. I would think. No, he didn't. But no. you, you also got to have the confidence. You just you want to finish well. That's true. 11, 33. And it's, it's, it's also something that they haven't been used to. The rounds they've shot to get here don't have the 12, so it's a whole new mindset change. 11. Great shooting from Doug. Yeah. Walks out here and only drops one is tough. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is is that some people don't go to Lancaster Archery Supply and get get these targets. So if you don't practice on them, we saw that earlier in Recurve with uh, with Gupta. He had he had such a lead. He decided on his last arrow he's going to just go for the twelve ring, and I think it was more of a practice shot than anything else. And then he was able to get it and tie up a match and go to, you know, a single arrow elimination. So, you know, that's something to, not to mention the fact, Rio, that what's tricky about that 12 ring is we spend all of our time just trying to make sure everything's in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's all we talk about. It floats right. in the middle, it hits in the middle, this and that. And then now all of a sudden you go, okay, well, I'm just gonna drop it right down here to the place I'm never supposed to go, <laughs> the seven, eight ring, and go for it. So 131 to 128, Noah Wood, Nikki, Takes a seat and finishes in eighth place with Doug Williams, who's our seventh seed, or our eighth seed. Now we'll advance to shoot to our sixth place. Let's go to PJ. Right. Let's bring out our number six seed from Blue Ridge, Virginia, Isaac Mack. Isaac qualified 27th and shot his way to number six. Now, Rio, looking at Isaac, at Isaac Mack, he's a multi-time state champion in USA State. So if you're shooting USA Archery, one of the advantages that you have there is the fact that you're under world archery rules, right? Which means that you only have that baby 10 ring, that 11 ring in the ring. middle. Yeah, that 11 ring. So he's definitely used to But the question is, what arrows is he shooting? Because the max diameter, 23s at world archery level. So. Here you can go to big ones, 27s, and that's 27 right there. Yeah, by the looks of it, it's definitely a 27. Long hold. 30 seconds on each shot clock. He's got plenty of time. Yeah. He, he let it go with 11 seconds. But and, and what's interesting is some people do have a longer hold. It's not that you're like, oh my gosh, things have held too long, but some guys have a longer hold. 
Ten. Oh, only the second point he's missed, right? Yeah, that's a little little chink for the first. Only you know missing in the armor. Mm -hmm. Like a paint scheme on that riser, though. Yeah, definitely a cool one. Eleven. Yeah, so I think with Mac, I think it looks like that's his rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a little longer shot. Eleven. And to come out here with his first year and put him in the middle is a good break the ice, feel better about it thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Start off with 33. Yep. He let that one go with 12 seconds on the clock. The first one with 11. So that's that seems to be his rhythm. Pace, yeah. yeah. 11. Nice shoot. Mm -hmm. Let's get to PJ. Isaac, welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. How's it feel to be up there? Uh, it's about like everywhere you watch on YouTube. I think you get a little bit of nerves. <laughs> uh, is, how many times have you shot the Classic? This is my third time. The first time we qualified and got knocked out the first round, and last year made it through for the second round. And Just this working year, your way up. This year we're here. <laughs> uh, tell us about your equipment here, because I have to admit, I have not seen that color riser there before. Well, um, yeah, we went with the QU camo. Uh, it's a 40-inch uh, Dominator Duo, so. New bow from PSE this year? Yeah, yeah, so uh, that's about it for that. I mean, uh, Bee Stinger bars and uh, got some uh, true ball stuff on here, shooting a Scott release, so. What's your arrows, 27s? 27, 12s, yeah. All right, well, welcome to the big stage here. Is this your first time on the stage? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is Second my first time, yep. All right. Um, all right, well, Isaac opened up with a 33, so he holds a one-point lead, 33-32 over Doug Williams. And looking at what they've done to get here, Rio, with those three rounds of eliminations that Isaac really referred to, we, we get all those points accumulated, and that's 1,056. And for our sixth seed, he was able to score 1,033. So he only dropped 23 points all weekend with 77 11s. Oof. 11. That's pretty good, that's solid. I mean, yep. people, I mean, they, watching these matches and things, they make it look so easy. I really don't think the, the person at home understands. I mean, they're hitting a penny size 11 ring <laughs> at 20 yards. <laughs> yeah, and wait till we get to our number one qualifier. The amount of 11s here was incredible. But Isaac has not stepped on his stage and, and not, I mean, he showed solid, solid yeah, arrows. If he's got nerves, he's not showing it. No. 11. And Doug's giving him a little room. You know, with a couple mm -hmm. of first misses, it's giving him a little bit maybe to relax. But he's not shown that he had any pressure. He's really just... Again. It's impressive. I know every time I come out on the stage and it was like that, if I could get through the first couple okay, it was better. The first, you know, it's always that one. Oh, and Doug goes for the 12. And oh, yeah. He called it. But that's the hard part with the 12. Like it's, it, it can either make you closer or it can really spread the gap. Mm hmm. And so there's been a lot shot at in the last two days and only a couple hit. Yeah, it's not an easy when we talk about how hard it is to uh, pin at that uh, distance. Uh, that's uh, way uh, tougher. Uh, yeah. Let's go to PJ. Talk to Doug. You went for it there, took the big risk, big reward. Yeah, I was too behind. I figured I had to go for it. Shot felt good, just didn't land where I wanted it. Just didn't land where you wanted it. That yep. sometimes happened in the archery. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going into, or at the half, sorry, it is 66-61, Isaac Mack running clean so far through this match. And Doug Williams will have two more shots at the 12 ring because you get one in end. So if he wants to just call it up again and go for it. 
Which can help make up for the eight, but it doesn't always help enough when you've got a guy that's not missing. Yeah, especially with the smallest ring in the middle counting for 11s. 11. Yeah, a one point is not a lot. Mm -hmm. So the other hard part is it, with that eight, it gives Isaac a little more breathing room confidence. And he already was shooting well, so 11. it makes that mountain to climb to try and catch him even harder. You could see a little bit of English on the release. When it broke, it wasn't where he wanted it to be. Him trying to throw it, help, help throw the bow back into that spot where he wanted it hit. He did grab, real click, left and right click. Did Isaac Mac a confidence click, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, most of the time the sights are so finite that they move that one click ain't moving you out of that spot. It's just more to help your yeah. mental than it is anything. Yeah. I mean, I've done clicks on mine and felt like I just kept hitting the same spot, so I guess it was sight grouping because <laughs> my mind is moving. Yeah, but Doug's on the 12 again. Just under the 12. 12 and a seven. seven. But when you're that far back, you got to... Agreed. Just go for it. Yep. I said yesterday, I said, you know, a rule change would be cool. Like, let's say you don't call a, a 12 your first three ends. You can save them up and then call them every, every arrow on your final end. Yeah. <laughs> the competition committee's listening right now going, I don't, I don't want it. What are you talking about? Let's hear what PJ's talking about. You were working that line, I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, get up here on the stage and things change a little bit. So just trying to get it dialed in. Where do you shoot back home in terms of club or pro shop? Where, where do you do your shooting? Um, we're out of Roanoke, Virginia is uh, Sherwood Archers. Um, Archers Cave is uh, one of my sponsors. And uh, we shoot with these guys back here. It's, gotcha. Uh, Good target community. Yes, we got Brad Baker, you know, shoot with him. Got a good group at home that we shoot indoors with, and uh, we just try to get together as much as we can and shoot when we can. We've all got kids and jobs and, and everything, so it's a lot. Absolutely. That's one of the things we appreciate about the Men's Open. It's our biggest class, and these are guys who are doing this just because they love the game. Brad Baker in the coach's box for Isaac Mack. And if you remember, there was a, a young man named Junior Sizemore who marched his way up through a shoot-up finals and then ended up getting in a finals match with Baker and got stopped after <laughs> shooting up from seventh place. Baker's a stud. Sherwood Archers they talk about. That's over by Shrewd. That's mm -hmm. only uh, where Shrewd is located. That's got, they have great field courses there. I've shot the Virginia State field over there once a couple of years ago. Beautiful course. Yeah, yeah and you see that a lot. Where there's a lot of good shooters. They get together, and they just keep producing more and more, and they practice together and push each other. It's really a cool thing to see. Yeah. And this ends up being tough. When you're that far back, it's yeah. like, man, it's just. And somebody in Isaac's position, you're like, man, I just don't want anything bad to go wrong. Just let's finish this out, get, get on to the next match, yeah. get through this. Because it's, you know, unless a major catastrophe happens, an knock break, something happens, we're, we're going to advance. Yeah. Inside out. Both archers using four. Vein fletches. Now, we have seen everything too from feathers to f even five inch veins as we get ready for our last shot here. We'll see if Matt can keep it rolling. Yeah, it's got to be a confidence one moving into the next one. A one point down. That seems to be pretty solid. I mean, that's what Doug shot the first match to advance, so. Yeah, that's the benchmark so far. 11, and Doug Williams, after draining that 33, just kind of turned around his coach's box and just shrugged his shoulders. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to beat that. All right. Wow, only one Williams point for Isaac Mack. Let's get to PJ. He's going to finish 
in seventh place. He's going to take home $650. Men's Open seventh place finisher, Doug Williams. Congrats to Doug. Doug, we appreciate you coming out every year. And that is our final score. It is confirmed, 131-123. Isaac Mack only dropped one point in that match. Good match. All right, let's bring out our number five seed from Corsica, Pennsylvania, Thomas Corson. All right, Rio, as we get up through the shoot-up finals, of course, the first couple of our competitors Noah Woodnicki qualified in the 52nd spot and shot his way into eighth. Doug Williams was 58th. Isaac Mack was our 27th place qualifier after our 60 arrow qualification rounds. And this is this shooter, Thomas Corson, is the last of our double digits. He qualified in 18th spot. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> and as we're seeing the the guys that are higher because of the, the cumulative scores placing them higher in the deal, so that's mm -hmm. a bigger help for them to qualify better makes a difference because some places you qualify it doesn't matter at all. So that's a cool fact of the Lancaster setup as to how it's going to help you. What motivates this archer, Isaac Mack, to keep shooting, his escape from work as opposed to this guy, 25 years as a hunter. He's only been competing two years as Thomas, and he just loves being in the woods. Hey. Another four-fletched vein. Now, let's talk about this for a second, Rio, because one thing that people often ask is, why would you use such a small vein outdoors if you're shooting 50 meter, or even well, then why go for veins that are longer yeah. and heavier indoor? Well, part of that is the size of the arrow. Uh, indoors, you're using a bigger arrow, just like on an airplane. You don't want to put little wings on a plane and hope you fly. You want something that controls it and makes it, it balance and stabilize better. And if you can see a little bit, some of them have a little twist on them to make it more like the rifling out of a gun, like a bullet, it'll spin it to make it more consistent and accurate. Uh, and also, I think, too, don't you think that just the shorter distance, it's only 20 yards to travel, you want to get it to steer properly, quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with that, too, and it's it's... That's why you do a bigger arrow, too, because you don't have the wind or the, any effects on it. And you want the biggest thing down there to hit to hope you catch those little itty-bitty lines. An outstanding inside-out arrow from Mac. And this can be the advantage of... Ten. Even though Thomas Corson came out and moved Mac off the spot to give him a different sight picture, different lighting, it hasn't worked yet. No, and uh, personally, I don't know. It, it's kind of a thing that they think they need to do, but I've never really seen it affect, like, in a huge way. In a huge way, yeah. Yesterday, yeah. great shoot. Yesterday, there was a little bit. We saw consistent shooting on the second, on the one that Mac is sitting on right now. Yeah. But you know what? The thing is that people talk, just like PJ is right now. Here. Here, yes. Gotcha. I think I heard uh, in the announcements this is your second year shooting competitively. Yes, sir. What made you take that up? Well, my kids, honestly. They all want to start shooting bows, and I said, well, you know, I've got six kids. If I'm going to get a competition set up now, I better buy it now before I can't afford it. <laughs> That's a good answer there. Well, it seems to be working for you. You made it here to the big stage. Did you watch on YouTube to get any kind of sense of what this was like? I've been watching this for a while. All right. Yeah, I couldn't tell you how many hours I have watching this part. <laughs> we appreciate the support and the views. Run through your setup for us. I'm running a Prime Black 9, uh, Trueball XL. I'm running Trueball Goat. I'm running the XL Achieve XP, a Shrewd Optum 35 with a two-step ring, Hamsky Rest, Shrewd Bars. That's about it. Your release there? Trueball Goat with a two-finger adapter. Trueball Goat. And the uh, uh, <coughs> arrows. Oh, Victory VTEX. Victory VTEX. All right. Well, welcome to the stage, Tom. We certainly appreciate you coming out. After our first end, Isaac Mack holds a three-point lead, 33-30. to 30. Tell us a little bit about the release that, that Thomas is using and, and how he's... Tell us about the release and then how he has it configured as you see it. Uh, it's, a, it's a release I help work on and build. It's 
It's a really cool one. It can be used either as a as a trigger button or as a uh, back tension. And he has it set up as a two finger, which I'm not sure if he's using it as a back tension or a button. I haven't paid enough attention to see it, but it works off a, a lever. Like if you're doing it as a back tension, it has a like a half moon that'll come over as you move it, rotate it, and set it off. Or as a trigger, you just lay your finger on it and pull through, and it'll compress your hand and set it off. So All right, let's take a look. See I think he's got it. Yeah, he's a button. He's got it set up as a button. Shooting it as a trigger. He'll lay his thumb on it and just kind of drop the bow on it closes hmm. and so yeah he's it's been a tough one for him to walk out here he's really had it hasn't had a chance to really get it in the middle yet and so i'm sure that's kind of weighing on your mind and that's a hard part with this you get out there and it just kind of keeps building like a snowball Eleven. especially when isaac's just drilling the middle oh, this is unreal he has gotten into such a great groove yeah he's done as good as anybody I've seen walk out here, even any some of the best pros out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. He gets one in the middle finally. Probably feels good to get that out of your system to be like, oh, we got started. Good shoot. Yeah. Shooting a two finger release, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of his slow process. He's shooting a back tension and just letting it happen. And, and that's a good thing. That kind of usually works out really well for you. 11. So again, like talking about the snowball one, but he just yeah. got that first one. Boom. You can build off that. Thomas, you mentioned you said you're shooting the true ball goat release. Let's go to PJ. The guy whose name is on that release is sitting right over there in the commentary calling your match, Rio Wild. That's awesome, one of my heroes. <laughs> Isaac, man, you're putting on a clinic up there. Uh, lots of shots. Uh, very patient wife, you know, to let us get out and shoot in the shop when we need to. She knows we've been training hard, so I, thanks to her and, and the family for chipping in and helping with the kids. Uh, any family here or is she watching at home? Uh, she's here. She's, She's here. here, all Family, right. Family's at home, uh, got a lot of friends at home watching, so we're excited. Awesome. Well, yes, you are certainly killing it today. Perfect again through two ends. Uh, Isaac Max, 66, Tom Corson, 62. Tom Corson, really strong behind the bow, though. You know, they're oh. not hitting exactly where he wants, but you can just see how much control he has over his equipment. And, and again, that's like I said, it's so hard to come out here and do this. I, I don't think people realize wh what it takes to get out there and hit the middle. That's why it's so impressive what Isaac's doing. But it's not, what Tom's doing is not, I mean, it's... It's, it's not bad at all. No, no. <laughs> he's like, doing great. The problem is he's going up against a steamroller. Yeah. He's going up against a Mac truck. Yeah, for Did sure. Really? Da, da, da. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's kind of low-hanging fruit, but I had to go for it. Yeah. And he's... And like I said, it's, it's not, people just don't really realize how tough yeah. that is. Yeah. It's not anything easy and we laugh about, oh, you're nervous up there, you're everything, but it takes a lot. And it looks like Isaac's is shooting a two finger back tension. That's it. Which is something that, I mean, not many guys do. It's a tough task to do. Ten. And his first, first miss of this match. Yeah. I think that's only the second point he's dropped, right? Yeah, missed one in the first match, and that's his second one. And you see this in this uh, shoot-up format. Yeah. The guy gets rolling, feels good, and just mm -hmm. he'll get going, and it's it just can just be a big thing for your confidence and how you're going. He didn't look like he loved him, but nope. boy, it landed Caught in the right it. spot. That's having a great setup. Oh, he's oh, going yeah. for the 12. I saw him hit that button. Yeah, light it up. Got plenty of time on the clock. There's 30 yeah. seconds to shoot each arrow for each competitor. The clock starts after the impact of the competitor's arrow. 10 seconds on the clock, plenty of time. Just Ooh, just low. <sighs> I think it's going to catch the seven ring. I agree with them, though. Got to yeah. go for it. At, at that point, you're back enough. You got to. You got to let something fly. How'd you go for it, Tom? He was 
Let's go to PJ. Yeah, couldn't wait on it. Yeah. How is it having that extra strategy in there? Do you have room to even think about that? You got Benton Christensen, a veteran back here, <laughs> yeah, giving he, you advice. Uh, he very politely made the call for that one to let me think about it, but yeah. <laughs> Hey, Do or don't, that's all there is to it. That's right. You did what you could. All right, heading into our last end, we have Isaac Mack, 98, Tom Corson, 91. Met Christensen, of course, a champion here. Yeah, he's won it a few times. Mm -hmm. Knows what he's doing. Yeah, and it's, it's so different now with the 12 ring in the last two years, though. Like, well, I've, I've been on the stage, and I've never had the 12 ring, so I don't even know how different I would play it. Well, that also helps, I think, with coach, with the coach. If yeah. you're in a rhythm, you know, and you're just shooting, because how often are you shooting the 12 ring back at your shop? And then you have someone who kind of gets you out yeah. of there. Still yeah. with the, didn't like the shot, but still hitting the 11 ring. It's important for someone to say, hey, man, why don't you take, right, hit that button, go for yeah. the 12. And it helps with your confidence if you get a guy yeah. back there that says, hey, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because they, they believe you can or they wouldn't tell you to do it. But the one part is it puts you on cruise control if you're in the lead and a guy does go for it and misses. It opens that gap dramatically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking Isaac's missed, what, two points the whole two matches, and you just shot a seven. That's a yeah. huge swing. Huge. Let's see if he just steps on the button. Just for fun. <laughs> Again, he didn't like it. No. Even talked after it, but it's there. Yeah, it gives a thumbs up. <laughs> well, no 12 call on this one. 11. Great shot. Yeah. Sometimes just to walk off and feel like you finish strong is not a bad thing. Especially if you maybe might be getting on a plane and going to Vegas next week. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's get to PJ. We'll get the score here in a minute, but we know that Tom Corson is going to finish in sixth place in men's open. He's got a payout of $800. Congratulations, Tom Corson. All right, that is our final score. Isaac Mack, 131. Tom Corson, 124. All right, so let's bring out our number four seed from Apple Creek, Ohio, Joseph Hirschberger. So now we're into our single digit seeds, how they qualified so once again here at the lancaster archery classic you had a 60 arrow qualification round that happened either thursday or friday you had your choice of what time and what day to shoot there were five different line times after qualifications the top 64 went into a single round elimination meaning if you lost you're out and this is the first of our single digit qualifiers so hershberger ended up our ninth place qualifier and was able to work his way through the eliminations and put himself in fourth spot. So now we're shooting to determine who's gonna be in fifth place as we get closer and closer to securing a podium spot. And Isaac Mack has done a great job from sixth place yeah. to win a couple matches. And I think what he's only dropped two points so far in two matches. Yeah, that's impressive. I don't care who you are, that makes it for a a pretty impressive deal. Yeah. But Joey comes out and starts off good. It's the first time we've seen them both really just start off in the middle, so we'll see if this is a good tight match. <laughs> For a guy who's sure not liking it, he's getting some good <laughs> landings. Definitely is. And that would be what we call a forgiving setup. setup. Yes. Eleven. Joey just rolling it. Eleven. 
Yeah. That one doesn't look much different than the one before, but he was a little happier with yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. So that's a good setup he's got rolling, so that helps a lot when you get nervous like this. I wonder if Joey's got confidence in the strings he's shooting. Yeah. He's a pretty amazing string builder, that's for sure. Uh, just a little bit of movement at the yeah. end. Let's get to BJ. knows you by <laughs> yeah everybody calls me a little bit of everything it's joe joey joseph so gotcha uh joey is this your first time on the lankstar tree final stage yes it is so how's how many times have you shot the classic oh tons i would say probably close to 10 times 10 yeah. times yeah. all right so you've been working all that time to get up here to the final stage how's it feel Oh, feels actually pretty good to make it up here. It's a lot of fun. It's like pressure, like at home, trying to put them in the middle as good as you can. All right, let's run through your setup for us. So I shoot a PSC, uh, True Ball, XL, AE veins and rests, gold tip, B stingers, and then obviously Joey's bow strings. I'm just gonna say, what kind of bow strings you got on there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you're getting settled in. Uh, that was a great first end, Isaac. 33, Joey, 32. Now, Joey, when does he have time to shoot? Because from what I understand, his business is booming. He's got to be making strings. He can't take time off. People need their strings and cables, man. Well, and funnier than that is Joey's a fanatic. Uh, one of our friends said he called him at 2 in the morning because he was working on strings and he thought he'd come up with something cool and new. <laughs> so, like, when we talk about some of the guys that have a love for archery, Joey has this huge love to build bow strings. He has understandings out of it that are crazy. So finding time for him to shoot, that's not sure where I know where that falls into his schedule, but he's a pretty amazing guy, super good to help people, and uh, builds a pretty good string. And he's a good shooter. You know, yes. he, he, as he lists his accomplishments, indoor nationals, 120 X's, you know, he shot. Yeah. He started... He started competing in archery because he just wanted to be better for hunting, and he loves it now because he gets to hang out with his friends. Yeah, I think that's a big part people don't realize, is archery such a tight-knit group and family and friends, and, like, uh, I got a friend into it the other day that he's totally like, he's like, man, these are the nicest people I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is still rolling, man. And this is even, incredible. Not even sure he like felt good about that shot, like, but he is just. He's got a setup. Him and his setup are just working well together today. There is no yeah. question about it. And it's hard when you got Isaac over there just just stroking it. Like well, and also what he's doing, too. Ten. Oh, okay. Is everybody else is hearing this in the practice range or trying to pay attention? Hopefully they're not. Is also Isaac Mack is working on the psychological when you get on stage. Mm-hmm. Eleven. Well, in, in, as much as back there, they don't have a TV on it, so you don't know it as much. Unless you were hearing it here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's true. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the Isaac practice range. Let's get to PJ. Here. Brad Baker, this is like the first year in how long that you are not on that stage? Uh, this is the first time since 2018. I didn't make 2018, it yeah, you're a uh, regular in this class. So you can talk about how's the competition been getting over the years? Oh, it's getting tougher. It's harder every year. It's harder every year. These guys are learning to shoot. How much time would you say you spend shooting during the week? Uh, two, three nights a week. Two, three nights a week couple hours at a time. Yeah, I usually try to shoot a 60 air game. Gotcha. All right, yes, Brad Baker's been a feature of our men's open finals for years. Good to see him back here helping Isaac Mack. Baker an absolute hammer in his own right. A lot of people after his several performance are like, how come you don't turn pro? How come you don't turn pro? And he's like, because I got a wife and kids and a job. That's why. Because <laughs> Rio, you know what it takes to be a pro shooter nowadays. I mean, it's hard not to have it as a full-time job well, and, and be really good at it. I agree, and people don't realize, like, that's part of this class that's really impressive, too. These guys have, have real jobs, mm -hmm. and they're 
they're still performing at a high level. Like, I mean, just like we talked about Joey, he's working all the time and trying to get, where does he find time to fit the arrows in? Where does all this go and all this stuff? And so, to me, it's just pretty impressive. Hey. Just so impressive that he's doing. I mean, like, oh my goodness. We've seen a lot of people shoot a lot of arrows, and it's it's rare that at this point where Max like, oh yeah, I I drilled that one. Well, and and to give you an yeah. idea, he missed 15 during the qualification. Hmm. So in 60 arrows, he missed 15 points. What's he missed now in 45? Three. Three. <laughs> like he's putting a performance out on this stage that's even better than he shot during his qualification, and so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The hard part is, as you get to the point with Joey, you got to start looking at maybe shooting 12 to, yeah. to put some extra pressure on him. Yeah. That's two points swing. I mean, I almost thought that Joey might go for it there. Yeah. If you're just joining us, Lancaster, Lancaster Archery Classic. As PJ's talking to Joey, let's get to him and let's hear a little bit more about Joey. I have my own shop that I shoot in as well. Gotcha. Is there a good target community? Yes, I think we have one of the strongest uh, like shooters around in Ohio to shoot against at Jason McCormick's place there. I mean, it's gotcha. pretty stout. So if you want to be able to hang in that uh, shooting arena, you better get your game right. Oh yeah, so <laughs> you better be shooting close to perfect, if not right on it, so. All right. Well, we are heading into our last end, and Isaac Mack has a one-point lead, 97, 96, 96. Joey, don't forget that red button there. So Mack missed one point in the first match he's had, one point in the second. He's already down two points, but he's got a, two, a single-point lead over Joey. Let's see if... And with the one point, do you, do you risk the 12? Do you not? Do you well, hope? I think you have to kind of let these first two arrows see what happens. Ten. Oh, yeah, see, you open yep. the door a little bit. I think you save it to the last one. Well, and I think that's part with, with Mac. Like, you think about these guys, they're not professionals, and they're not shooting all the time. It's got to be starting to wear on him a little uh, bit of, of exhaustion. Ooh. Ooh. And Joey gave him back a bunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think given my position, I'd have shot the 12 now. Because then to put the pressure on him to shoot his last arrow would be maybe a little more dramatic. Yeah, I get what you're saying. 11. Okay. Yeah, he was 11 now. You're, I mean, I guess in the back of your mind, he, he could shoot the 12. But if you had done it and showed him up in front, it might have added pressure. Yeah. This whole format's just tough enough to hard to explain what it can do to you and make your mind think. Line. That's close. Ooh, that's going to be a call in that hole. Joey's called to 12. Oh, Just close. under it. I think it's low, but let's it looks a little low. Down. It's hard to tell it's from here. It's hard to tell because it's not a target we shoot every day. No, and you don't know what the arrows look like oh. in the target. Oh, there it is. yeah. Had to go for it, though. There was oh, no choice. Yep. And, and at least he had the guts to do it. So we'll wait for official scoring. If you're just joining us and you're wondering what Joey Hirschberger shot at, that is the finals only, I guess you could say. 12 ring, that's available. Okay, a risk reward turn. shot. Isaac Mack, You're allowed to shoot at it one time per end, and you gotta call it. Joey's gonna leave, uh, as our fifth place so Joey will take fifth place, 123 to 129 for Mack, so Mack moves on.
Again, another one. Yep. So 30. Now do they move him off his spot again, off the perch? I mean, you might as well just keep All moving right. him around. Let's yeah. Bring out our He's getting his two step down. From mm -hmm. Flushing, Michigan, Rocky Cummins Jr. So Rocky coming in here is the NFA Youth Male Freestyle Indoor National Champion. So he's no stranger to pressure. He's been shooting for 12 years. There's our fifth place qualifier after the first day of qualifications. And he is our third seed. So this match is to determine fourth place and who marches on. Well, and he shot a good qualifying. He only was nine down for the four, for the 60 arrows. So he got, you know, shot good. But like I said, the difference between coming over there in the practice range out here is just always like, you, like to me, I equated it like stepping in the cold water. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, at first, and is it, is it going to be something easy for you to handle or not? You know, I mean, it's just a, it's a tough part to get that first arrow down there to see where it's going to land. Yeah. And that takes what do you think of that? Up. Yeah, it's a good way to start. I'll be curious how Isaac starts holding up. Getting further and further, you're going to be getting a little more tired. Yeah, but it seems not to be affecting him yet. And he does have the button-up shirt from the old uh, yeah. CEO. Yeah, so it's a little bit more flannel than the CEO <laughs> shirt, but I get you. Yeah. All right, make no mistake, the, the names that you're looking at there are transposed. Rocky is on target number two. This is Isaac Max. Yeah. Target. So just for now, don't worry about the names on top. We'll call them for you. Boy, I like Rocky Cummings Jun Cummins Jr.'s explosive shot after the release. I mean, it looks yeah. like he's ripping the boat to pieces. He's got a good, strong shot. That is no doubt there. 33. Ten. Yeah, he didn't like that one at all. No, he knew that one on the release. First time he's trailed out here on the stage, I think. Let's go to PJ. All right, Rocky, welcome to Lancaster Archery Classic final stage. This is your first time here, I believe? Yeah, first time up on the stage. Up on the stage. I'm trying to remember, I talked to you at NFA Indoor Nationals one year. You did something ridiculous. I can't remember what it was. Uh, yeah, I shot a uh, 600 with 120 Xs in the youth class. In the youth class, that's right. Now I remember that. Incredible shooting. Uh, run through your equipment for us. I have a uh, shooting a Hoyt Invicta 40. An Excel Achieves Sight, uh, Rogue Bow Strings, we got Gold Tip Triple X's, shooting a True Ball HT Pro, got A Hot Rod Bars, that's about right. it. Have you shot the Lancaster Archery Classic before? Yeah, I've been here four or five times. Four or five times, all right. Welcome to the final stage. You definitely came out swinging. Need to change our score here one moment. He seems pretty calm. I'd say for a young kid stepping out there, I mean, not very old, stepping out there shooting some, some solid arrows to start the match. 120X on a five spot is no joke. No. Especially as a, as a youth. Because that's a tough round to keep your head in the game. Mm -hmm. like, to me, more people miss that because they fall asleep at the wheel, just like driving for miles. Yeah. And he's just got it rolling. And again, this is the first time Isaac's trailed out here on this. So we'll see how he responds. Yeah. 
<laughs> we just keep know. we just keep looking at each other like like your surprise shot you keep surprising yourself by hitting the 11 ring you know when he just his his expressions are i think almost the most interesting part <laughs> that that was a little bit quicker of a shot i think from cummins jr than we've mm -hmm. seen before but obviously the result of that was pushing it a little bit to the left that opens the door a little bit 11. Oh, now we have a tie ball game. Mm -hmm. They seem to handle the bean behind a little bit. Like the no, no extra pressure on him, no reason to push. He's he stayed with that pace of that shot. He's not. Ten. Which is always interesting because yeah. the guy gets in a different predicament. How does his shot change? And his has been on point the same the whole time. I mean, we're talking. Ten line. Almost down to the second, he but yeah. That one's going to be a call. I mean, from the shadow, from our look, to me it looks like it's a little low, but we can't see it without that flashlight. No. All right, let's see what PJ's going to do next. Oh, yeah, just below it. Yeah. Looks like that might be just under. Let's see what our judges say. Uh, but Isaac. Looks good from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right call. <laughs> now you made me forget what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh, I know. I have forgotten what seed you came in as. Seven or six? Uh, six. Six. Yeah. Okay. Are you familiar with the the uh, great story that is the CEO, Tim Hanley. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I watched that shoot up online a couple times. Yeah. Gotcha, I didn't know if your shirt there was in honor of the CEO, but uh, no. you, you know it is possible to go from those, that low seat all the way to the top. Uh, yeah, you know, we, that's what we're shooting for, so. How's your shooting feeling now? Are you feeling like you're Still feeling strong, or? Yeah, I feel like I'm in the groove, you know. It's, uh, made a couple of bad shots, but we'll just keep rolling and see what happens. All right, very good. So, we are tied up here, 64-64 at the half. Both archers can use that 12 button. I like watching Rocky shoot after the shot. He's got an explosive, just explosive shot. Mm -hmm. In contrast to what we're looking at with Isaac Mack, who's just, he's pulling through, he's taking his time, and he's just so smooth after the release. Yeah, I mean, you can see him physically pull that D-loop around, yeah. can't you? Yeah, it's just, it's coming around his face, it's wrapping in there tight, and he's got a lot of, uh, of build-up tension in between there to really execute and make that shot break. Yeah. Or Isaac's is more just methodical, the same, do 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 do. Yeah, it's good. That's the cool part about archery. Like, anyone can tell me whatever they want, but there's 15 ways or 100 ways to shoot a shot that will work yeah. for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's, you just got to find the person that has the, the denemer and everything else to just do it. One. Yeah. They're calling at 11. He started to hang it out just a little to the right. Mm -hmm. I almost would think his coach would say, hey, just, just grab a click. Yeah. Yes. My dad used to tell me you paid for that site with them expensive knobs. Use them. That's right. <laughs> you told me before. Yeah. Clicks are free, man. Yeah, they're just free. Click it. They're free. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little quicker shot than he's had. But. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think he just reached down and grabbed one. Atta a boy. click, I mean, on his site. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that, though. Uh, let's see if PJ's going to get in there. Let's talk a little bit about clicking in sights. What am I even okay. saying? Well, what you do is when you're hitting on one side or the other, you'll reach up and sites have a, a right to left windage or click, as we're calling it, and they have little indents in them. And as you move it just a little bit, it goes click, 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 click. So it's considered a micro adjust. So 
it takes maybe four clicks to get you from one side of the hex to the other, so it's not a real mm -hmm. big moving thing. All right, Rocky, how's it feel up there? Let's go to PJ. I feel a little bit better than I expected. A little bit better? Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with nerves in these pressure, si pressure situations? You've been in them before. I just try to trust my shot best I can. Each shot, I try to just remind myself if I make a good shot, it's going to hit where I want it to hit. You getting some good help from your coach back here? Why don't you introduce him? Yeah, that's uh, my coach is my dad. <laughs> Rocky, other Rocky. Other Rocky, exactly. All right. Rocky one and Rocky two, I like that. <laughs> All right, so heading into our last end, we have a one point lead for Rocky Cummins Jr. 97, Isaac Mack 96. I mean, Rocky fighting a Mack truck? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm bump. <laughs> yeah. Again, low hanging fruit. <laughs> yep. And with one point, this is a good match. We got. You know, that 12 is going to come into play. I have a, a feeling that it could make a big difference. And once again, this is to determine who finishes in fourth place and who will be moving up to at least guarantee themselves a podium. Yeah. Good arrow. Good start to the whole thing. Isaac Mack, the truck has been rolling. Let's see if he can keep it going. Yeah. And I saw Mac, he grabbed another click or two. Mm -hmm. Got to try to move that arrow a little bit to the left. If you're new to archery or, you know, you've shot before and you get a little confused about yeah. which direction to move Ooh. your sight. Yeah, I'm not sure shot. that's an 11. It's sticking outside that big 10 a little bit, so that kind of can lean to it being out. So it's going to probably come down to a call. Yeah, PJ's got a good look at it with a scope. But just to finish that thought, yeah. if you're ever wondering which way to go with your your yeah. sight, chase your arrow. If yeah. it's going right, move it right. If it's going high, move it high. That's going to move it back down. It's going to move it back over. So chase the arrow. That's the tip for the yeah. day. <laughs> that's a good one because that does help. 11, 33. I noticed the reticle too that time. Uh, he's looking back at his coach. Does he want to pull the trigger on the 12? Right. He's going, uh, uh, he's done her. <laughs> little hesitant oh, wow. there, but dropping the hammer. A little dramatic. Yeah. Which honestly, if he, he doesn't get that one, it could be. Got it. <laughs> guess what? That's, yeah. just, that's it. I told you the 12 was going to come into it. Yep. And Comes down to that arrow call now. That was one of the most authoritative hits that we've yeah. seen for the 12 as well. That's nearly a half shaft 12. Yeah. There's no question. Not like the Brady Ellison. It, if you didn't see the Olympic recurve for today, go back and watch it. The Brady Ellison call was unbelievable. So we'll wait for official, the official scoring, but it looks like we've got a tie. Is a tie. Oh, All right, so go. it is a tie. So the 12? Let's go ahead. Yeah, 12 plate. Let's get to PJ about this. Wise is going to explain our rules. Gentlemen, congratulations. We have a shoot off now. We'll shoot one arrow each for score. If we still have a tie, we'll shoot a second arrow for score. If it's still tied, we'll shoot a third arrow, but that will be measured closest to the center. The 12 is in play on the first two arrows only. Good luck. Add another stack of arrows, or at least another arrow, to Isaac's max. He's already got 48 in competition, not including how many he threw down range and warm up. Oh, and he's and he's been shooting good. I mean, mm -hmm. and then he steps up and shoots a twelve to send this into extra arrows. Eleven. The twelve is in play, but you're not calling it here. No. So if Mac wants to keep going, he's got a tie. Well, this is a tough one because would you like to end it here or do you want to wait till you get to a close yeah. dead center arrow, which is can be just a yeah. little bit of luck. I know. 
Our judges will score these, and but it looks like we're going to go to a second scoring arrow. Yeah. If this was closest to the center, I think uh, it would be Rocky who would get in the nod on that one. Yeah. And sometimes in your mind you think, oh, did I waste my best closest to center arrow or not? Yeah, right. <laughs> Good one. Pressure's on. Arrow number 50 since coming to the stage. And sometimes that's, sometimes that's hard to follow after they put a good one in. You're like, oh. But he seemed to be pretty good at it. 11. <laughs> so arrow 50, a good one. So we're going to go to arrow 51. Now we're going closest to the center. And I think this is one of the hard ones, too, because uh, you don't. You, you, everything's such a focus to get it in the middle. It's so hard to be just, is it the best shot I can do? Is it, is it, is it where I want it? And, and you're thinking right now, where was I hitting? What clicks do I need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about clicks, it's like, where do I go with it? All right. So Rocky Cummins Jr. is going to lead us off. I'll set the benchmark for closest to the center. And I've never been sure what I like on the closest yeah. center. I like to be first or second. Because oh. you see, I mean, there's that's a good shot, but like, there is room for to put a better one. Yeah, it's about a half shaft in. Or do you like to set that one down there and say, here, you get a chance to look at it? Oh. For okay, so plenty of time on the clock. It's 15 seconds. There's 30 seconds on the clock initially. He had to go back and turn on his fiber light, the light that lights his fiber. Ooh, they're pretty close. That's a big deal because he only had three seconds, four seconds left on the clock. And the fact that he even was able to nail that, considering that we've seen Isaac Mack have a longer shot cycle, this is going to be close. We're going to have to get out the calibers. That was actually just an incredible shot by Isaac oh. Mack. I mean, seriously, to let down on a 30-second clock. There, the calipers are out. So what they'll do is they're going to measure from that center spot to the edge of the arrow. And they'll just take that measurement, bring it right over here, and compare it. What the heck? Is it that? Dude, that's dead. What? That is, like, dead on from Man, our perspective. the cross. I think they're going to have to shoot a second one, maybe. I don't know. Oh! Wow. The Mack truck rolls on. Yeah. I mean, half a millimeter. That's as close as it gets without having to say, hey, let's go another one. Yeah. That's. $1,250. Congratulations, Rocky. Nice shooting. Great finish. All right, let's bring out our number two seed. I'll have to get him to pronounce that for me. Old wine, maybe, Iowa, Jason Gedkin. Boy, it's hard not to talk about that match that just happened. I mean, you're talking Look. about, a, you know, a single arrow elimination match and both shooters shoot 33s, and I think that that win was by a half a millimeter. If that. If, if that. I mean, it was just, I mean, I saw them calipers go up, and there wasn't much of a difference at all. That's pretty amazing. All right, so we have our second seed, Jason Goatkin, out of Iowa. So now we're guaranteed a podium. So for Isaac Mack on the right side, he's 51 arrows into this competition. For Jason, he's going to shoot his first. When he started off only three point or seven points yeah. off perfect for the qualification. So 
I mean, as we get going, it's it's the guys have shot better qualifications out of the 60 arrows. They're they're shooting good. They're it's just going to get tougher and tougher for Isaac yeah. as we go. But he comes out and starts off with an 11, so that's a good start. Looks good and solid. Yeah. Nice follow through. Mm -hmm. He's got the hammer behind him, so he's been out here already today, so. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Tim Gillingham, who's in coach's box for Jason. Started shooting archery because he likes the competition. He's still into archery, and it motivates him because he's got too much invested to quit now. <laughs> That's probably both money and time. <laughs> Don't we all have a little too much invested now? <laughs> yeah, Looks confident. Yeah, and a good start. I mean, you walk out there and do that right out of the gate, really good. He's moving a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> well, it. let's get to PJ. Jason, welcome to Lancaster Tree Classic Stage. Thank you. Have you been here before? A couple of times. A couple of times. Yeah. How many? Two other times. Two other times, all right. What's your best finish so far? Fourth. Fourth, all right. Well, you're, get, I believe, guaranteed, qualified third. Yes, guaranteed to do better than that this weekend. That's good. <laughs> How does it feel coming out, getting up there? Good. Got the nerves, you open with a 33? Yeah. Well, yeah, still nervous, but. Run through your equipment for us, your setup. Uh, it's a TRX-40, uh, the XL Achieve Sight, Shrewd Scope, Downrange optics lens, uh, spot hog edge swap rest, uh, bee stinger stabilizers, got uh, gold tip triple X arrows, and a uh, true ball fulc fulcrum flex release. Fulcrum flex. All right. Well, great start, Jason. Welcome to the stage again. You open with a 33. You got a one point lead over Isaac Mack. 33 32. And that starts the almost just the same way he started the last match, so we can hope, only hope that it ends as good as the last one. Greg White with Rio Wild, men's open. The Lancaster Archery Classic here in Spooky Nook Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. The podium has already been decided as to who is going to stand on it now. We're just trying to figure out who's going to be second place or third place and advance to shoot against our number one seed. Yeah. Solid. Just confident, right? Like you can just mm -hmm. tell he's been putting the time in. Well, and having said he's been fourth here and been on the stage a few times, it just feels you, you, you've been there before, it helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it looks to me like <laughs> Isaac is getting tired, but it, his scores aren't showing it. Yep. Isaac is now 55 arrows into his on stage performance. Yeah. Really smooth and like just, you're right, the confidence was probably a pretty good term to call it. Ten. Yeah. I, 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 another point. My, my gut says that he's getting tired. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's put on a heck of a performance today. Anybody can say what they want, but yep. I can see, you can just see it a little bit starting to like. That's close. That's a tough one to call from here. But I think it's just like say, well, these guys have jobs and they don't get to practice like that. This is a monumental task that he's achieving. 10. Well, we did hear Brad Baker, who shoots with Max, say that they shoot about 60 arrows two or three times a week. 
we're getting right to that threshold too for Isaac Mack mm -hmm. if he kind of competes with the same same arrows in terms of volume. And, that, and now you add the extra pressure of this. And a shoot off arrow. Yeah. Let's go to uh, PJ. Inches, but this is a game of millimeters. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, I think we're more in inches or, yeah, half foot. <laughs> Starting to yeah, hopefully get back in a groove here in a second. Looking to get back in the groove. That's what I figured you'd say. <laughs> yes, please, pop some 12s. We always love them. Uh, so after, at the halfway point, we are Jason Gedkin, 65, Isaac Mack, 63. What did you guess on the release that Isaac Mack, that two-finger that he's got there? He mentioned it earlier, but I forgot what he said. I don't remember what it was. It looks like an older, <clears throat> something older, and he has a big gold, like, thumb peg on it. Something there. I, I, something I've, he's pretty much worked on himself, I think, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just out, just yeah. up left. Running a kisser button, too. A little piece of steel on his string that's going in the corner of his mouth. That helps him get an anchor point to be able to be more consistent. Yeah. So I helped out a little bit there, giving back a point. Yeah. Jason looks so steady. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where Isaac was like, maybe I got to lean on some 12s because he's he, you don't expect him to give you much as steady as he looks. Mm -hmm. Eleven. And one thing I'm noticing is his uh, cord on his really or his rest. On Mac. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, it, that big pink string that's sticking out that works on his rest from his limb. As he draws back, the limb flexes in and allows the rest to come up to hold the arrow. And as he shoots, the limb pulls it back tight and it pulls the rest out of the way as the arrow goes by. So it's called a, a drop away and it just sometimes will give you a little more clearance. All right, so now's a one point game. If Mac can shoot an 11 here, we'll be tied up. Yeah. Oh. The Mack truck had lost a little steam, but it's catching back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He might be over the, the precipice here, <laughs> heading downhill. Yeah. When you think not only all that other pressure, like you don't think just that, but now he's getting into the metals. You know you're where you could be first, second, or third, so it's mm -hmm. added even more pressure onto him. Like, yeah, like it's like first place is right there, at least the opportunity <laughs> to shoot for first, <laughs> yeah. just within his grasp. Yeah. So just, we are tied, we are tied. confirmation. That's, that's 60 arrows for Mac so far. And Isaac Mack had to get through Noah Woodnicki, Tom Corson, Joey Hirsch, Hirschberger, and Rocky Cummins Jr. And he ended up with what for 50, for 60 arrows? Nine down. About nine down, yeah. <laughs> Considerably better than his 15 he had to qualify. Under super pressure. Like. Yeah. Good start. It's funny, too, because you can almost tell with Jason mm -hmm. when, when it's an 11. All right, he forgot oh. to turn his light on again. But we saw that didn't matter when it came down. Yeah, he's still got plenty of time. 17 seconds. Worked out good for him on his closest to dead center arrow, though. Maybe made him a little more aggressive. Right, five seconds. Yeah. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> he even said nope before it hit, and it hit there. That is what I call bad takeoff, good landing. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. And a really forgiving setup.
Yeah. And to be honest, on the other side, when you hear your competitors saying, nope, and it's in, you're like, what in the world is going on? Yeah, it's just, point. it's his day. Yeah. Well, and he isn't going for a 12, so he's going to hope for a 11 and hope that Isaac doesn't pull the trigger on a 12. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he got. So Isaac's going to play for the tie, it looks like. <laughs> that look for a moment scared me, right? Yeah. But I've got to stop. I've got to stop trusting <laughs> that Mac knows that it's not going in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> he sure is. He, if you were to watch his face and not know the score, you would really be confused. Mm -hmm. Wait for confirmation, but I believe we're heading to another shoot-off. Yeah, it looks like we're going to head to another shoot-off. That is correct. As we've just learned that the score is confirmed. So let's go ahead and hear the rules for the tie once again. Gentlemen, congratulations. You're shooting well. To break the tie, we'll have a one arrow shoot off for score. Should you still be tied, we'll shoot a second arrow for score. If you're still tied, we'll shoot a third arrow measured closest to the center. On the first two arrows, the 12 is in play, but not on the third. Good luck. Here we are again. Yeah. We haven't seen anybody pull the trigger on the 12 yet in the shoot off. No. <laughs> so. For Jason Gokin, we're going. Well, and, and it's interesting because as Jason being the higher ranked person, he chooses to shoot first or second. And to choose first is kind of an interesting thing because you don't know if that guy's going to go for a 12 or not. That's true. Yeah, you that's you leave point. yourself to an open door that, uh, like, yeah. that, that could be the, your undoing. Fourth shoot off arrow for Mac. He shot nothing but 11 so far, and he needs this 11 to tie. Well, I think he got it. Yeah. By the look, it looks like it's flexed the line in, which should be touching. But we'll get a closer look, I'm sure. <sighs> no, wait a second. Size. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all it has to do is touch that black line. It doesn't have to break through. Just, just lay on it, and you're good. So we'll have another shoot-off arrow now. And again, he's going to go first and leave that door open. Like, I almost think it would be interesting if somebody did that just to. I mean, you're on the podium. You're coming from sixth place. Do you take the risk? Yeah. Got the top. But I don't think he will. This is the third arrow he's had the opportunity to, to really close that door by doing it. Mm -hmm. And Isaac hasn't. He's just gone just like his shot. It's methodical and just the same pace, the same. Yeah. Which has led to some good results. Yep. Now we're going closest to the center again. Last time it was 0.2 millimeters. Yes. Yeah, it was so unofficially. Ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Shoot off arrow number six for Mac, closest to the center. For Jason, it's going to be shoot off arrow number three. Yeah. Plenty of room. Yeah. His pace is really consistent. Mm -hmm. Jason's got a really consistent, good shot. But can the Mack truck keep rolling? On arrow number 66. 
Oh, yeah. That one looks closer. <laughs> it, it looks good. closer. Yeah, I'm pretty Let's see sure if we get is. a measurement again. And his coach high fived him when he shot it. So uh, Jason's not happy. He's over shaking his head. But we've seen shake that. <laughs> yep, it's confirmed. The Mack truck rolls on. Wow, and we're going to go to an Isaac to Isaac. Shoot for the number one spot. Let's go to PJ. Congratulations, Jason Gedkin. Great shooting. All right, let's bring out our number one seed from St. Albans, Vermont, Isaac Sullivan. <laughs> Well, well, well. <laughs> Isaac Sullivan, what a familiar face. You and I have known this guy for a while. Yeah. And he is entertaining. Oh, he's a hoot, <laughs> to say the least. So it is Isaac versus Isaac. <clears throat> and Isaac qualified really good with a 655, so five which one? for we got. We have to have to differentiate between which one, Sullivan or Mac? Who are you talking about? Oh, Sullivan, you're right. <laughs> we'll have to give that up a little bit, so. Uh, yeah, All right. Sullivan shot good. He had the choice. Did the Vermont native to shoot first, and he chooses it. Yeah. Boy, Looking man, good. This, this Isaac Mack with the, with the shirt, with the way he's shooting, just his reminiscence of Hanley and the CEO. Is Mack the CEO of Mack Trucks? <laughs> The thing I like about Mac is, is that you can see that like every shot's a surprise, which is mm -hmm. really what you want to get to sometimes. Yeah, you want to let the bow shoot itself more than you shoot the bow. Does Sullivan have a two finger? Yeah. No. Uh, he might do by the looks of it. What is going on with these two finger releases? It's what the third or fourth one we've seen in this round. Mm -hmm. If he's got it, I don't know. I'd have to take a closer look. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's got a two finger. Yeah, for sure. Who started this trend? I don't know. That's a. Thirty-three. It's a good start out of the gate to walk out here and roll that out. Of course, Isaac Sullivan, youth world champion in 2021, and USA as well, USA archery. 11. I think there's a couple calls there for Mac. Yeah. Keeping his fingers crossed. He's got a couple extra that aren't on the release. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's go to PJ. Welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I don't believe this is your first time up here. Am it I incorrect? Is. It is your first yep. time up here. All right. How many times have you shot the Classic? Four, five times. Four or five times. Always in men's open? Nope, I was youth and I just aged out. Gotcha, all right. So, you've been thinking about this then for at least four years. How's it feel to come in, especially as the number one seed? It's good. It's different than what I've been on stage before. Gotcha, all right, well run through your equipment for us. Tell us what you're shooting. Uh, I shoot the uh, Matthews TRX 38 G2. I'm shooting a uh, black gold sight with an ultra view housing on it and a uh, specialty archery peep. Hamski uh, RAS and uh, Shrewd Rev X bars. Arrows and release? Um, Black Gold 26s, Biter Knox, and the uh, True Ball HT two finger release. All right, got those Biter Knox working there. Biter, one of our classic sponsors. Glad to have them supporting us. Uh, after the first N, we have Isaac with a 33. Oh. I gotta differentiate. Isaac Sullivan with a 33. Isaac Mack, 32. Yeah, so probably that second arrow, I think that Mack shot was just a little bit up high. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one. The other one looked solid, so. Mm -hmm. I aged out. <laughs> that's what Sullivan said. 
We do know this kid can pound. Oh, he can shoot. Yeah. We had a good time with him at the Outdoor Nationals this year, and he he's a hoot to be around. If you're just joining us, we're at the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic. It's men's open, the amateur division. We have Isaac Sullivan shooting off against Isaac Mack. Sullivan, your number one qualifier, number one seed, going up at number six seed, who shot his way all the way up. Oh, we got a tie ball game now. That's right. And here comes arrow number 71. Oof. 71 for Isaac Mack. Yeah. That is a lot under the lights. Oh, for sure. And I mean, and like I said, it's, it's not only tiring to shoot that many arrows, but you're getting into the fact of it's, your your pressure and your nerves are just, oh. Yeah. But sometimes you get into it and you just, it's becomes like second nature. It's just your, it's kind of helped you in a way too, so. The problem is it's you cannot prepare for this mentally at home. No. You know, and that's, no. that's the difference of the toll. He is handling it perfectly. And at the midway point, it's all tied up at 65 yeah. apiece. So Isaac, I hear Let's go to the PJ. Saying, Come on, Isaac. Go, Isaac. Do you think he was cheering for you? Uh, sure. You know. <laughs> I'll tell you what I can get right now. <laughs> Gotcha. How you feeling? 72 hours you've fired so far. I didn't need to know that. Yeah, it's, it's been a few. I'm starting to wear down a little bit, but, you know, I'm going to keep giving it some gas. We've, we've practiced more than this, so, you know, gotcha. we'll just keep going. Make just, clean shots. Just came back with a 33, which brought us to a tied match now. Halfway through, 65-65 between the Isaacs. And you know what's coming out of my mouth right now, right? <laughs> he doesn't need gas in the tank, he needs diesel. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, it's been a long day. Well, we got us another good match. I mean, we've had a sh two shootoffs in a row. Are we gonna get another one? Uh, I mean, how can it not go this way? It just has that feeling. Yeah. I mean, if Isaac and Mac can pull this off, it is gonna be one of the most difficult ways to do it. But this kid has uh -huh. got a lot of confidence, but. Yeah. It's, I think it's there, but it's, it's not solid. Mm -hmm. Sullivan come out on fire and it's kind of just give a little opening the last two ends. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Good solid. Yeah. Man, he's consistent. Mm -hmm. I wish at times that I could keep that consistent under pressure. He has just stayed at a pace that is just pretty impressive. Ooh. Yeah, you knew that one. Another 33 will give him a two point advantage. With only six arrows left to go. That's a pretty good yeah. I think we're going to start seeing a lot more button up shirts. Think so? <laughs> I mean, good golly. Jim Just... Hanley, the CEO, to Isaac Mack. Isaac, uh, where do you shoot back from? <laughs> Let's go to PJ. Belky's Archery. Belky's Archery. All right, good target community there. Yeah, mile yeah. down the road from my house. So. And tell us about your coach back here in the coach's box. Oh, he's a good friend. Shot on a bunch of circuits for the youth and stuff, and we have a good bond together. We see you guys out at USATs. You guys have a lot of fun out there. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite, 50 meter or indoor? Uh, definitely 50 meter. 50 meter. Yep. All right, well, you're pretty good at this indoor game as well. We have a two-point lead right now. Isaac Mack, 98. Isaac Sullivan, 96.
Rio, this is it. I mean, this is this is for the champion. You have the number six seed, who's got a two point lead over the number one seed. I mean, can you get any more nervous than these three arrows? No. And if you're you're Sullivan, you're 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 got to hope for some help. Yeah. Wow. On arrow number seventy six, another eleven. And Mac hasn't given any any help to really anybody. He's been pretty consistently solid. Nice. Yeah. Because like I said, he stayed consistent the entire time. Like, yeah. that face like, yeah. oh man uh, I wish mine were doing a lot more of that mm -hmm. now if Sullivan hits an 11 here we know he's going to be stepping on that 12 but yeah. and you know to me it's almost funny because I would almost have stepped on it earlier to put the pressure on I me mean, if you just shot the 12 you, you add that to into their shot more last shot potential for the Mack truck Eleven. Wow. Arrow seventy eight and eleven. The lights on. He looks confident. He got it. He got it. He nailed it. <laughs> That's what is it? One point two short. One point two short. I mean still a good finish. You finished with a one thirty, but Wow, what a what a performance. 78 arrows for Isaac Mack. Wow. Two shoot-offs that went the distance. Two closest arrow calls. One of them was a whisker. <laughs> no. Yeah, it could have gone either way by that. Just a oof. 75 arrows it took him to get there. Isaac Mack takes this one. 131 to 130. Congrats. Congratulations to Isaac Sullivan. He is going to be our second place finisher, taking home $2,500 from us, $75 from Black Eagle. Give it up for Isaac Sullivan. And your champion, $5,000 from us, 300 from Easton, 100 from B Stinger, 75 from Trueball, Isaac Mack. <laughs> How does that feel now? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Lots sixth place. So when you came in, knowing that you were in sixth place, did this factor in at all? Did you think you could get here? No, we, we'd all kind of talked about it and just, you know, focus, shoot your shot. Shoot your shot and, uh, you know, let the rest happen the way it happens, you know. It's like that 12, you know, you just pull it out. You know, hopefully the pin would have been on the first time, but, you know, it was, you know. Had to hit a 12, two closest to centers. I mean, they put you through the ringer. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of shots, uh, and so it'd be nice to have a good relaxing week. We've we've worked hard to get here, so lots of practice. So it's I appreciate it. All right, congratulations, Isaac Mack, 2023 Men's Open champ. Well, Isaac Mack steamrolled them all. Whoa. What a performance! Incredible. Great Boy. That amateur open category never disappoints. Incredible shooting at the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic here from Spooky Nick Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Eight archers lined up for shoot-up finals, and our number six seed makes it all the way to number one. It just doesn't disappoint. We have more coming at you, including we're welcoming the Women Open Pro. Four of the top shooters in the world are going to take center stage and put on a show for us. Don't go anywhere.